Welcome to a new Airbus Instruments tutorial. In the following video, you will see how to configure your Phantom sensor with your Gateway 2.0. If you have not yet configured your Gateway 2.0 to send data anywhere, in this video description you will find two tutorials which will help you to connect your Gateway to EI Analytic or EI Monitoring. When your gateway is already connected to a network, it will show an IP address on the main screen. Connect your computer to the same network as the gateway and go to a web browser of your choice. Type the IP address in the search bar and click enter. This will load the gateway settings page. In here, in the Live State tab, we will see the device general status with its serial number. In this section, we must pair our sensor with our receiver. This is very important as the Phantom sensor will not automatically connect to the gateway if we don't do this. Below, you will see the sensor detected by the receiver. Some sensor will need to be updated to be used with the gateway 2.0. If several sensors are detected, you will see a list where you can change the page to see more sensors. Under search, you can manually enter a phantom serial number or part of the number to find the sensor on the list. You can choose to sort the phantoms by serial number, last seen, node type, signal strength, battery, and last download. On the right, you can filter the sensor showing only the previous sensors, the unpaired ones, the sensors with low battery, the low signal ones, your favorite sensors, the secure sensors and unsecure sensors. Use any of the options to search for your phantom. On the screen, you will see the status of the sensor with the last date it was seen by the gateway the RMS value measured on each axis, the battery voltage, and the sensor internal temperature. Use the pair button to pair the sensor with your gateway. The same button allows you to unpair it later if you wish. Remember that the sensor will not connect automatically to the gateway if we not pair them. Now we will talk about the sensor settings. At the bottom right, you will have 5 options. The first option will add the sensor to your favorite list. The second option is called Collect Way From Now. It activates the sensor, making it record a time waveform and an FFT. With this tool, you can collect data whenever you want. The third option is called Collection Settings. Here you will have 4 tools. In time and collection, you will be able to choose the collection mode. Follow global collection setting will make the sensor record data according to the gateway global settings. Interval allows you to send data with a defined interval. Switch between minutes, hours or days on the right side. And on the left side, type the interval of your choice, as long as you stay within the allowed range of the sensor. With the option 3, time of the day, you can choose a specific times of the day to send data. Click on custom collection time and select the time with the clock. Then click on add time to add it to the list. You can add several hours by repeating this process. And remove hours with the remove button. The last option, disable time and collection on this sensor, will disable the phantom automatic collection. 
it will only record data if you activate it manually with the collect way from now tool that we saw earlier. Next section is called triggered collection. Here you can link your vibration sensor with other type of sensor like current sensors, RPM and dry contact. The third section is called Velocity RMS Alarms. Here you can enable and disable the sensor alarms and you will have two levels of alarms. The level 1 alarm will cause the sensor to send the time wave from an FFT if the alarm threshold is exceeded on any of the measurement axes. Enter the alarm value for each axis. The level 2 alarm will trigger a notification if the alarm threshold is exceeded. Choose the alarm value for each axis. Below, you can choose the alarm check interval. This is defined in counts or sequence. Choose after how many counts the sensor will check if any of the axes are alarmed. You will see how to set each count duration in seconds a little bit later. Finally, you can tell the sensor how much time must pass before it can be alarmed again after an alarm. On the right side, change between minutes, hours or days, and on the left side, enter the value. For example, with this configuration shown in the video, if the phantom is alarmed, 15 minutes must pass before it can be alarmed again. This is just an example and you can choose the value that suits you best. In custom collection settings, by default, the sensor will take the gateway global settings. Enable the override global collection settings to modify these sensor configurations only. This will display more options. You can choose to record data in triaxial or single axis mode. In single axis mode, you can choose which axis to record or recall all axes sequentially. You can also change the sample rate, the resolution lines, and the dynamic range whose options will depend on whether you have a high range or a low range sensor. When you are done with these configurations, click set to save the changes. The fourth option is called in sensor settings. In the general section, you can change the max transfer power. This is recommended to keep at 8 dBm. The sensor update interval defines after how many seconds the sensor updates its status. This is called sequence or count. And this directly affects the alarm check interval as we saw earlier in the video. Below, you will have the option Connect to Phantom Gateway V1. If you want this sensor to connect to the gateway receiver of the previous version, activate this option. If you also want this sensor to connect to the gateway 2.0, you must check the Enable Permanent Incoming Connection option. Otherwise, the sensor will not connect to the gateway 2.0 and only to the gateway of the first generation. If you only want to use this sensor with your gateway 2.0, keep both options disabled. Finally, under Vibration Triaxial Settings, you will see the frequency range with which the Phantom Sensor RMS values are calculated. According to the standard, the range goes from 10 to 1000 Hz, but you can change it if you wish. You can also choose the dynamic range in which the RMS are calculated the sample rate and maximum frequency, and the resolution lines. Click set when you're done to save your changes. The fifth and last sensor option will display more information as well as three additional buttons. On the main screen, it will add the last time the sensor downloaded the time wave from an FFT. The last time it was alarmed the last collection by trigger, how many seconds have passed since the last sequence, the type of battery this sensor uses, the update interval or time between each sequence, the max transfer power, 
and the sequence number, meaning the total number of time it has updated its status. Below you will have three new buttons. The first one is called Forget and it will make the gateway forget the sensor. This way it will remove the phantom from the list and you will delete the configurations you have made. This is intended for sensors that you no longer use. If the sensor is still transmitting data, it will appear on the list again, although it will not be paired or configured. With the sleep bottom, the sensor will go to sleep mode. It will not try to connect to the gateway, it will not update its status or check alarms. It will be inactive until you manually reset it with the magnetic key. This will help you to save the battery of the sensor that you're not using. The advanced button will allow you to load a specific firmware into your sensor. To avoid damaging your phantom, do not enter a code without the help of an Airbus instrument support assistance. You have finished this tutorial. If you have any questions, please contact our technical support team.